Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Arun's Biology. Today we are going to describe the mechanism of glycolysis and the fate of pyruvic acid during aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So keep tuned. So the word glycolysis is derived from two Greek words. One is glycose that means sugar and another is lysis that means spitting. So glycolysis is basically deals with the splitting of sugar. It acts as the common central pathway of glucose metabolism during the process of respiration. Glycolysis process occurs within the cytoplasm of the cell both in the presence of oxygen as well as in the absence of oxygen both in during the aerobic as well as the anaerobic respiration. It consists of 10 steps that require 10 different enzymes. The mechanism of glycolysis was discovered by three eminent scientists, Emden, Meyerhoff and Parnas and based on the first letter of their names, it is called the EMP pathway. So start with the mechanism of glycolysis. So the first substrate here is glucose which is converted into glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase. So this is the first step of glycolysis. Here phosphorylation occurs and the phosphate group comes from the hydrolysis of ATP. So ATP is converted into ADP and the phosphate group is attached here at the 6th position of glucose. Okay. So here it is CH2OH and it is converted into CH2OP. That means the phosphate comes and binds with the 6th carbon of glucose. In the second step, in the second step, the glucose phosphate undergoes isomerization reaction by the enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase and it is converted into fructose 6-phosphate. Okay? Now, fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay? So, both the position will get phosphorylated here by the enzyme phosphofructokinase. Here also, the ATP supplies the phosphate group and itself converted into the ADP. Now, this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is splitted at this position and converted into two components, two triose phosphate. One is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate and another is phosphoglyceraldehyde by the enzyme aldolase. Okay, so aldolase converts the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and phosphoglyceraldehyde. Now these two components can be interconverted to each other by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Okay, as a result, here the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into the uh, phosphoglyceraldehyde by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. As a result, here two molecules of phosphoglyceraldehyde will be produced. Now, phosphoglyceraldehyde is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglyceraldehyde dehydrogenase. Here, the NAD plus, that is the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is reduced and converted into reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide with the formation of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Here, the 3, 1 and 3, both the positions were, uh, were phosphorylated and here only the third position is phosphorylated. So, one phosphate group comes out that binds with the ADP and convert it into the ATP and here the phosphate group comes from the substrate of this reaction as a result this step can be called as the substrate level phosphorylation okay substrate level phosphorylation substrate level phosphorylation so what is the meaning of sub substrate level phosphorylation that means during the phosphorylation or addition of phosphate group to the ADP the phosphate comes from the substrate of the reaction now 3 phosphoglycerate is converted into 2 phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase 
टू फॉस्फो ग्लिसराइड इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू फॉस्फो एनोल पायुवेट बाय द एंजाइम एनोलेज सो एनोलेज कन्वर्ट्स द टू फॉस्फो ग्लिसराइड इन टू फॉस्फो एनोल पायुवेट एंड थ्री फॉस्फो ग्लिसराइड इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू टू फॉस्फो ग्लिसराइड बाय द एंजाइम फॉस्फो ग्लिसराइड न्यूटेज ओके नाउ दिस फॉस्फोएनॉल पायरुवेट इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू द अल्टीमेट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस दैट इज द पायरुवेट बाय द एंजाइम पायरुवेट काइनेज हियर आल्सो द फॉस्फेट दैट कम्स आउट फ्रॉम द फॉस्फोएनॉल पायरुवेट इज एडेड विद द एडीपी एंड कन्वर्टेड इनटू एटीपी सो हियर आल्सो इट इज अ सबस्ट्रेट लेवल फॉस्फोराइलेशन एज वी 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 हैव ऑलरेडी ऑब्जर्वड ड्यूरिंग द कन्वर्शन ऑफ वन थ्री बिस फॉस्फोग्लिसराइड to three phosphoglyceride there is one substrate level phosphorylation another substrate level phosphorylation occur during the conversion of the phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvic acid now we have to look uh, to the uh, 10 steps of glycolysis we have to remember this 10 steps of glycolysis out of this 10 steps there are seven steps which are reversible in nature okay so uh, which are these steps so all the steps are reversible only there are three steps which are irreversible in nature and i put the red arrow here so the first irreversible step is the number 1 where the glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate okay the second irreversible step is the step 3 where the fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 1 6 phosphate by the enzyme phospho fructokinase so one is this another is this so the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate and here also i have written the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate is irreversible the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 phosphate is irreversible and the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to five uh, pyruvic acid is also a irreversible type of reaction so during the regulatory regulation of the glycolytic pathway we will discuss these three irreversible step and the mechanism of reaction uh, during the regulation of glycolysis we will discuss these three enzymes how they regulate the glycolytic pathway okay so during this 10 steps there are initially the conversion of glucose to the fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Okay, during the conversion of glucose to fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, that means the first, second, and third. These reactions are called as the investment phase. Okay, so conversion of glucose to glucose uh, fructose or fructose 1,6 bisphosphate is called the investment phase. Now, why it is called investment phase? Because there is the investment of energy in the form of ATP. so here if you notice the atp is converted into adp okay that means here one atp molecule is utilized in the in the third step in the third step when the fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate again one molecule of atp is utilized okay that's why it is called as the investment phase okay so it is investment phase in the second part the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is converted into two triose phosphate that is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and phosphoglyceraldehyde 3 phosphate okay or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate during this uh, reaction it is called as the or this reaction is called as the splitting step okay where the 6 carbon component the 6 carbon component that is the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is converted into two 3 carbon component one is that or dihydroxyacetone phosphate another is pgald okay so this is called as the splitting phase of glycolysis in the third step the phosphoglyceraldehyde is converted into so from phosphoglyceraldehyde to pyruvic acid this step is called as the pay off phase why because during this reactions the atp is produced from the adp okay so atp is produced from the adp here also atp is produced from the adp as we have already told that pgald is of two molecules due to the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate into phosphoglyceraldehyde as a result all these components come in two molecules and here also two molecules of atp is produced and here also two molecules of atp is produced again 
During the phosphoglycerate the conversion of phosphoglycerate dehyde into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate by the enzyme PGAND dehydrogenase, one molecule of NADH2 or NADH plus H plus is produced. So, the entire reaction we can summarize as glucose, okay, the substrate of glycolysis plus 2 ADP, okay, or adenosine diphosphate that reacts with two molecules of inorganic phosphate. Here we have taken the two molecules of NAD, okay, here two molecules of NAD and it produces two molecules of pyruvic acid, two molecules of ATP, okay, so two molecules of ATP and two NADH plus H plus that is in the reduced form, okay. So if we calculate how much energy we have invested and how much energy we have uh, gained from the glycolysis process, we can calculate here during the conversion of the glucose to glucose 6 phosphate, 1 ATP is utilized, so minus 1 ATP. During the conversion of fructose to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate, again 1 molecule of ATP is utilized. So here 2 molecules of ATP is utilized by the investment phase. And if we calculate how much energy we got from the glycolytic process, so the conversion of 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate to 3 phosphoglycerate yields 2 molecules of ATP. So here plus 2 molecules of ATP. And again, conversion of phosphine and pyruvate to pyruvic acid, we got two molecules of ATP. Okay, so we got four molecules of ATP. So the net gain, net gain during the process of glycolysis equals to four minus two, that is two molecules of ATP. So what is the net gain of glycolytic process? Is the formation of two molecules of ATP and two molecules of reduced NAD. That reduced NAD can undergo the electron transport system during the aerobic respiration to yield 2.5 molecules of ATP. Now what is the fate of this pyruvic acid that was produced in the cytoplasm of the cell? Now this pyruvic acid can choose any of the three different processes based on whether it is aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. If it is anaerobic, uh, aerobic respiration, it is converted first into acetyl coenzyme A by the enzyme pyruvic acid dehydrogenase or pyruvate dehydrogenase and enter into the citric acid cycle in the mitochondrial matrix. And finally, uh, from the citric acid cycle, the NADH or NADH plus H plus, FADH plus H plus, and GTP is produced. So, this occurs during the aerobic. Uh, respiration. Okay, if it is anaerobic in nature, the pyruvic acid is converted into lactate. Okay, pyruvic acid is converted into lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, and this reaction occurs in the muscle cell as well as lactic acid bacteria. That is lab lactic acid bacteria. So this is called as the lactic acid cycle or lactate dehydrogenase enzyme help in this reaction. Okay, so you can you can write here the lactic acid, lactic acid, okay, lactic acid fermentation. This can also be called as fermentation. Okay, so fermentation is of two types. One is lactic acid fermentation during the anaerobic respiration. So we are talking about these two. These two processes are basically anaerobic respiration. An aerobic and aerobic respiration okay anaerobic respiration the second anaerobic respiration uh, the pyruvic acid is converted first into the acetyl acetyl dehyde by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase the acetyl dehyde is converted into ethyl alcohol by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase okay with the liberation of NAD class so in both the these reactions NADH is converted into NAD plus with the formation of lactate or with the formation of ethyl alcohol and during this production of ethyl alcohol we can also get the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide as a byproduct okay and this reaction basically occurs in yeast or saccharomyces cerevisiae and we all know that yeast can also act as the brewer's yeast and the baker's yeast and during that production the carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol is very much required so this is all about the glycolysis process in the next video we will talk about the regulatory system or mechanism of regulation of the glycolysis okay so thank you for watching uh, if you want this kind of 
videos from my side you can uh, subscribe my channel you can write in the comment box which video do you want okay you can like and press the bell icon to keep updated thank you for watching